Weapons are an essential part of an assassin's arsenal and looking back over the last almost 16 years there have been some pretty damn amazing weapons. Today we're going to delve into the 10 coolest weapons in all of Assassin's Creed. Just a quick note, this is just my opinion and I'd love to know if I missed any weapons you think deserve to be on this list down in the comment section. There will be spoilers for quite a few of the games and also this list is not ordered, it was just way too difficult to rank them. They're all so cool. Right, let's start this off with a bang. The guillotine gun from Unity is really something special and unique in the series. Given to Arno Dorian by a young boy during the Dead Kings DLC for Assassin's Creed Unity, the guillotine gun is a ranged weapon which also provides a melee option. The gun is basically a grenade launcher with an axe head at the end. Now if that doesn't sound amazing, then I don't know what does. Napoleon Bonaparte's men use this weapon as they attempt to recover an artifact from the catacombs underneath the Basilica of St. Denis. The... Denis? Denis. Yeah, that's probably not how you say it at all, but you know, I did my best, okay? During this exploration of the catacombs, the orphan Leon stole the weapon, eventually gifting it to Arno. This weapon hits very damn hard in range mode, and although slow, it does seem to be a decent weapon for melee brawls. Next up, we have the Rope Dart, first introduced in the short film Assassin's Creed Embers, but the first time we actually got to use it was during Assassin's Creed 3 when Connor acquired one. It is also used by Edward Kenway and Shea Cormack in the two games that followed. The rope dart can be used in many cool ways, but in its most basic utilization, it can be used to pull enemies towards you after being thrown at them. Other uses include stealth attacks to hang enemies from a tree, or ship beam using their own weight to pull the enemies into the air. It looks brutal and stylish, and it's just epic. The rope dart was allegedly developed by Xiao Jun, who we first saw in Embers. She uses it many times in a quest to destroy the eight tigers and restore the assassins of China to their former strength. Xiao Jun was also known to use the rope dart as a grappling hook as the blade was strong enough to be impaled into wood. Xiao Jun shared her tool with the other branches of the Assassin Brotherhood. Vlad Tepes's sword was the sword of Vlad the Impaler whose nickname was given to him because of his brutal treatment of torture victims. I'm sure you can work out kinda how he did things based on his name. Either way, he had a very cool looking sword. Vlad was captured by the leader of the Ottoman Assassins in 1476 and later died shortly after by being decapitated. His sword was buried with him until Ezio Artore looted it from his grave in 1511. Basically the sword looks very stylish and has some cool unique killing moves. When Ezio has this sword equipped, enemies have 15% less morale, which is decent all on its own. It also does a decent amount of damage. The only problem with this sword is that it's for people who pre-ordered the game or purchased the DLC, which I'm almost certain is no longer available, even if you do already own it. Good old Ubisoft. Okay, now this is one of, if not my favorite melee weapon in the series. Connor's Tomahawk is one of the most stylish and well-used weapons in the series. It helps that Connor is an absolute beast in combat. Look at him go, bashing in faces, taking names, and I think he's all out of bubblegum. Anyways. I just love the design of this weapon with the blade being the assassin's logo. There's just something about it that makes it awesome. I think I might actually buy a replica one day. The tomahawk that Connor wields originally belonged to John de la Tour, who was the first colonial assassin in the New World. Achilles Davenport, Connor's mentor, was gifted the tomahawk when John de la Tour sacrificed himself to give Achilles time to escape a battle so that he could establish the colonial brotherhood. After Connor became an assassin, Achilles bestowed the axe upon him, an axe he may have given his own son had he survived. Avalon eventually ends up with Connor's axe in the game Liberation. If you're enjoying the video, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video, and maybe subscribe with notifications on to not miss any of my upcoming content. Thank you! Now I'm the first person to complain about the problems with Odyssey, and the fact that it was set so long before there were even hidden ones is a huge problem, for many reasons. They needed something to replace the Hidden Blade and so they gave the Broken Spear of Leonidas to Cassandra as her assassination tool. The fact that you can't one shot assassinate many of the enemies in this game is another problem. Right, right. I'll, I'll do my best not to talk about it here, okay? Let's just focus on the spear itself. Everyone knows the story of the 300 and the Spear of Leonidas that he wielded at the Battle of Thermopylae. After his death, it was broken from the battle and was passed on to his daughter Marini, who was in turn Cassandra's mother who gifted it to her. The spear is part of the ever-growing list of Isu artifacts and has special powers. Now it is silly and ridiculous, but flying from person to person assassinating them is crazy fun with this weapon. I know it isn't grounded, but that doesn't make it not cool. I've gone over this stuff so much in the past, I'm trying so hard not to tread the same path. And I am struggling though, as you can probably tell. 
Either way, carrying around the spear of the legendary warrior is awesome in itself, and Cassandra has some pretty amazing animations for stealth takedowns with this weapon, and this assassin attack move thing it does. Ezio can collect many different swords on his journey in his three games, but none of them come as close to greatness as the Sword of Altair. Being able to use or unlock any of the equipment of the older assassins is great all on its own, but using the sword of the legendary assassin and the father of the modern assassins is something just a little bit more special. The sword has the iconic eagle pommel with a thin blade designed for a noble fighting style. In both AC2 and Brotherhood, it has 5 in all stats making it the strongest weapon in the game, but in Revelations, it is nerfed a little, but I guess it was overshadowed by weapons in the Ottoman Empire. In AC2, Ezio can buy it from the blacksmith in Montegirione, and can be unlocked by completing the guild quest in Brotherhood. Altair himself used this sword to great effect in his early life before he was demoted back to novice breaking every one of the tenets of the creed. After his 7th kill in his redemption quest, he reacquired his old sword. Ezio lost this sword at the beginning of Brotherhood, as Altair's armor and sword were struck by a cannonball from Cesare's attack on the villa. Ezio then managed to get it back himself and used it in the Siege of Vienna where he killed Cesare. What would a list of the coolest Assassin's Creed weapons be without the most iconic of them all? The signature weapon of the Assassins dates all the way back to the proto-assassin Darius who used it to assassinate the Persian king Xerxes I in 465 BCE. He travelled to Egypt with Cassandra's child Elpidios, who is the ancestor of Aya or Amunet, who is one of the two forming members of the Hidden Ones. Bayek, Aya's husband, was given the original blade which he made the signature weapon of the Hidden Ones and in turn for all future assassins. It is the primary tool used by the Brotherhood to assassinate their targets. The retracting blade is perfect for a group who wish to remain undetected as much as possible by hiding the murder weapon and being able to sneak them in. It also lends its hand to enabling the user to better partake in parkour as they don't have to hold the weapon in their hand and in some cases, like in Revelations, a modification like the hook blade can actually help with parkour to further enhance the user's abilities. The hidden blade has known many improvements and evolutions throughout the century since it was first used. The blade used to involve a sacrifice of the ring finger to allow its blade to extend but has since been modified so a sacrifice is no longer required. I'm as surprised as you are to see a Valhalla weapon on this list. While I found Excalibur and Mjolnir to be a bit sloppy and boring, I actually found Gungnir, the Spear of Odin, or the Spear of Eden, to be surprisingly fun and interesting. While being another Isu artifact, which are losing their touch because of the sheer amount of them in recent games, I think it's still unique enough to be considered cool. Odin used the spear in battles fought by the Isu and held it until his death from the Great Catastrophe. Eivor eventually retrieved the spear while on her way to Idrisil. This spear looks pretty cool, and while I normally hate all these silly weapons with their flashy colours and things that Ubisoft usually make us pay real money for, no, I won't be using the Prince of Persia weapons in Mirage, that just look ridiculous. Anyways, what was I saying? Right, oh yeah, even though it has these crazy particles and things going off it, it still feels nice to fight with. Its range is extended by a force field that allows you to hit enemies from further than you would think just looking at the spear. This one is more about the application than the looks or significance. The Dagger of Brutus has some real historical significance as it is believed to be the dagger of the Hidden One Marcus Junius Brutus and is proclaimed to be the dagger Brutus used to assassinate Julius Caesar. The weapon is forged from Roman and Egyptian steel and was initially owned by Amunet, co-founder of the Hidden Ones before she gifted it to Brutus. Unfortunately, Brutus committed suicide and his belongings including the dagger were sealed in an underground chamber that remained hidden until Ezio found and claimed them for himself in 1503. You know what, I'm just starting to realize, Ezio's a bit of a grave robber, isn't he? In Brotherhood, Ezio must complete the Lairs of Romulus tombs. One of six scrolls await him at the end of each, and are very fun, mostly parkour challenges, which are a highlight of Brotherhood. So it's very fun to obtain this dagger, and Brutus's armor is cool too. The dagger is very good in combat with a 5 in damage, speed, and deflect. Arno has some very useful tools at his disposal, but none of them are as effective as the Phantom Blade, except maybe the completely overpowered smoke bombs, but anyway, that's not a weapon. The Phantom Blade is a modified version of the Hidden Blade that while retaining its original usage also has the addition of a very small crossbow that can quickly fire very accurate darts at a decent range that are as deadly as a bolt. The Phantom Blade can be the difference between alerting an entire enemy squadron and completing an entire mission from stealth. People much better than me at Unity can perform some pretty sweet takedowns on multiple guards combining the Hidden Blade and Phantom Blade along with excellent parkour skills and when it all comes together it's absolutely beautiful. 
You can upgrade the Phantom Blade to carry two darts at once so you don't need to reload it as often. And Berserk darts can also be launched from it to make the darts target go into a frenzy and attack his fellow soldiers. Time for a quick special mention that didn't quite make it into the top 10. The Hidden Gun, while not exactly stealthy, was a fun weapon to use in its time period. And although it has been surpassed by things such as the Phantom Blade, it was still very cool at the time that it was used. The time it takes to load, aim and fire are all things that take it just out of the top 10, but there's just something satisfying about getting to finally shoot some of these bad guys in the face, after all game having to chase them around and get close to assassinate them. If you want to see more of my content, why not click on this video about the worst thing in each Assassin's Creed game, or my ranking of every mainline game. Thanks to my patron Alex Applegate for the continued support, thanks everyone else for watching, and I'll catch you in the next Assassin's Creed video. Sticks out. It's a huge problem for many. Blah blah blah. Huge problem for many.